Dear students, in this experiment we will learn about production of enzyme alpha amylase by submerged fermentation. In submerged fermentation, the microorganisms grow as suspension in fermentation media. The fermentation media contains substrate that is either dissolved or a solid substrate is added to a large amount of liquid media. The organism is grown in liquid medium that is aerated and agitated continuously. Submerged fermentation has been used for the production of different kinds of microbial enzymes. There are several benefits of submerged fermentation including proper agitation and aeration, uniform distribution of nutrients and waste products, uniform distribution of cells and improved process control. However, submerged fermentation is costly and there are more chances of contamination. Alpha amylase catalyzes the hydrolysis of alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds in starch and give products like dextrins and maltose. Alpha amylase is produced by different microbes including bacteria, fungi and yeast. The medium composition and the process parameters required in the fermentation experiment vary according to the type of the microorganism selected for the experiment. The fermentation media is already prepared. This medium contains 1% soluble starch, 0.5% magnesium sulfate, 0.02% potassium nitrate, 0.5% potassium dihydrogen phosphate and 0.1% calcium chloride. The pH of the medium was adjusted to 5.5. 25 ml of the fermentation media was poured to 250 ml Erdenmere flask. The flask is covered with a cotton plug and aluminium foil and is sterilized in an autoclave at 121 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes at 15 psi. Conidial suspension of pure culture of Spergillus niger will be used as inoculum. For the preparation of conidial inoculum, Add 10 ml of sterilized distilled water or 0.05% monoxyl OT. Use a sterile inoculating loop to break the clumps of the conidia and shake the tube vigorously to make a homogeneous suspension. Then 1 ml of the suspension will be added to the fermentation media. The conidial count per ml will be done using hemocytometer. After inoculation, place the flask in a shaking incubator at 30 degrees centigrade, 200 rpm for 72 hours. The 
flask is already processed and incubated for 72 hours. After 72 hours of incubation, transfer the contents of the flask to a 15 ml centrifuge tube. Add 11 ml of the fermented medium to the centrifuge tubes. Centrifuge the contents of the flask at 6000 rpm for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, take out the centrifuge tubes. After centrifugation, two layers are formed. Pellet contains the cells and the cell debris, whereas the upper supernatant and clear layer will be used for the estimation of alpha mileage. The next process of uh, the quality check and others. So whenever we have to take the samples, we will check the contamination too after under the examination of the microscope. So gradually after four hours, we will go proceed for the estimation of the product is formed or not. And then we will uh, continue this fermentation process for about uh, 72 hours because we will proceed the fermentation process on fermenter after optimizing in a shake flask. So during the shake flask study, we have optimized that Aspergillus niger on this medium is produced maximum amylase at 72 hours. But we will check other parameters that how that uh, agitation, duration, pH and other factors will affect as we have studied that uh, we can change the different ingredient of the medium just to optimize this fermentation process. So we can utilize a different approaches as we have studied in our diff theory modules about placard Berman design and other central components design. But at this time, after four hours, we will check the samples and then we will talk about that either our product in term of mileage is produced or not. If produced, how much that is produced. So after four hours, we will take uh, the samples now. As I have already told you, while taking the sample, first we will discard the first 5 ml. We have take out the 5 ml sample. Now we will analyze it for the, you can see here the sample. So we will use, uh, first of all, we will separate the biomass from the So we use 1 ml, 1 ml and 2 append off and then we will centrifuge. So we will put into this 
this we have to put an equal amount in the opposite direction and then we fix then we will uh, select the so we will for 10 minutes at 10,000 rpm and then we will have a start so after the centrifugation after 10 minutes we will uh, use the superintendent for uh, enzyme estimation and then the remaining uh, biomass for uh, the dry cell mass. Now the centrifugation is over. So we'll take out our samples. So you can see that uh, there is a little pallet behind and we will use the supernatant as a enzyme assay. So we to start the estimation of the mileage production, we will add 1 ml of the star solution in in flask in the test tubes so we have added the 1 ml of the starch into four different test tubes then we will add 1 ml of uh, citrate phosphate buffer having the suitable pH that is 5.5 in each. So we have added the citrus phosphate buffer. Then we add 100 microliter of the enzyme, which we called as a supernatant. into the two test tubes in one test tube we will add 100 microliter the buffer In one test tube, we will add a standard maltose, 0.2 milligram per ml of uh, the standard, which we have here already made. So in the third one test tube, which we call as a control, So this is basically we can call it as blank. This is for standard in which we add the 0.2 milligram of that, and it is uh, the control in which we will add the enzyme after the incubation. And two are the experimental. So after adding it, we will incubate all these test tubes 
into the shaking incubator uh, in a shaking water bath at temperature about 45 degrees Celsius. So Mr. Usman will uh, incubate these test tube uh, in uh, water bath incubating shaker uh, for 15 minutes. So we will come back again after 15 minutes to check either the enzyme is active or not. So as uh, we incubate our uh, five different test tubes, first one our blank and then our standard and then there was a control and two were experiment. So we will check that uh, the amylase is produced or not. Just we add uh, 1 percent, uh, 1 ml of 1 percent of star solution in each and then we add uh, the enzyme extract into the tubes. Or in the last we will only add uh, which we called as uh, the control later on. So because there is no more incubation time. So now we will add, there are two methods to check either the starch is hydrolyzed or not. One is just uh, adding the iodine. If there will be a blue color, it means that there will be a starch is present. If there will be a no more blue color, then we say that the enzyme produced during, during the fermentation process that hydrolyze the whole starch. So first we will check it on uh, the iodine just uh, by putting it into this. Uh, we will take the 100 microliters of the experiment and then we add the iodine. You can see that color. So by the same way, another if we add and uh, we add as a control, which we called as the blank. So you can see that what is the difference? So in 15 minutes, the enzyme produced through this fermentation totally hydrolyzed the stars. That how much it hydrolyzed, we will quantify it with DNS method. So for the DNS method, we will add 1 ml of DNS dinitrosalicylic acid solution After adding the DNS, we will put all these five test tube into the boiling water for five minutes. The water is already here. The brown color formation will show the intensity of the maltose or a reducing sugar produced in the result of uh, the star's hydrolyzation. So after five minutes, we will check that how much is the brown color. So by comparing with the control and the standard on a spectrophotometer at the wavelength of 550 nanometer, we can check and uh, quantify 
the starch hydrolyze in result of the amylase produced. As the iodine test shows that it is the complete hydrolysis of the starch present in that sample, it means that the aspergillus niger has produced a potential amount of uh, the amylase in that. So we can also check the protein produced uh, during this fermentation process. So by estimating the protein produced, we can estimate the specific activity of this fermentation process. As I already told yet, we have to put after the DNS for 15 minutes in uh, the boiling water. So after the five minute, we will take out all our uh, As we have seen in our uh, iodine test that almost all the starch has hydrolyzed, you can see easily here the comparison of the control with the uh, experiment. So in which there was no enzyme and there is uh, the experiment. So here you can see uh, another in which we add the enzyme just without the incubation, we have no time for the incubation, so there is no more hydrolyzation. So, in one test tube, we have added the standard of maltose 0.2 milligram per ml. So, this standard we can compare the these. So, this first one is the control in which there was only starch and no enzyme, and here is the maltose reducing sugar known as 0.2 milligram per ml. So here you can see that how much is the red color. So now the we can estimate that how much of one, uh, 100, and 100 micro ml of the enzymes in 10 minutes that how much maltose is produced. So we can check and quantify in a spectrophotometer. So let's go on a spectrophotometer. So first we will add the blank. First we will put the blank and then make it zero. Now we will add the experiment. But before adding the experiment, we will add the standard, which contains 0.2 milligram per ml of maltose. The reading is 0.29 absorbance. Then we add our experiment. The reading is 1.68. So as uh, we have seen that uh, while uh, taking uh, the absorbance of the standard uh, 0.2 milligram per ml of maltose, we have the reading 0.29. But our experiment that has the reading 1.6. Nine to six. So this experiment 
as we use 100 microliter of the enzyme and incubate for 15 minutes 15 minutes so we can calculate here that how much is the enzyme activity just by putting the formula so the absorbance of the experiment 1.926 divided by the absorbance of the standard 0.29 0 multiply by the concentration of uh, the standard 0.2 and then the enzymes uh, volume of the enzyme so that is micro uh, 100 microliter that is about 0.1 ml so if we divide this by the time of incubation which is 15 minute so if we calculate this, we can calculate here 1.926 multiplied by 0.2 is equal to 0.385 and then 0 0.29 multiply by 0.1 multiply by 15 so is equal to 0.435 so if we divide 0.385 divided by 0.435 so it is 0.8 8 milligram per ml of the maltose formed by 1 ml of the enzymes in 1 minute so if we want to calculate the unit of the enzymes so convert this 0.88 milligram into the molecular uh, into the micromole so for conversion of the micromole so we have to convert 0.88 multiplied by 1000 and divided by the molecular weight of the maltose this is about uh, 2.36 uh, uh, units per ml per minute so in 4 hours of fermentation we produce the enzymes 2.3 units per ml so we can easily say that uh, if the total amount of 500 uh, 5 liter so 5 liter if we convert into 2 ml we can calculate this what is the total amount of the unit which we produced by this fermentation within 4 hours.